It allows you to have a software team working on software and a hardware team working on hardware. You know, that's kind of what you ideally want. Yeah, for sure. It gets messy <laughs> when one starts doing the other's job, right? It, exactly. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And the challenge we're going to try to solve today is building an intelligent vision system at the edge. And to help us do that, we brought on Michael Greer, who's a digital design engineer over at Opal Kelly. How you doing, Michael? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Sure thing. Happy to have you. So um, obviously, you know, we're getting all sensory and perceptive with our with our systems these days. You know, they're able to speak and understand language. They're also able to see a lot of them now. So what does a modern vision system today in particular, you know, what is it capable of and, and what are the, the various components that you need to make this thing work? Yeah, so some examples of what modern systems are capable of are, as you said, um, you know, we've got object detection, we've got text recognition, and we've got robotic control. So mm -hmm. the basic components that you'll need in a system like this are an image sensor, you'll need some high bandwidth memory that can act as a frame buffer, and then you need some high performance computational hardware that can run the video processing pipeline itself. Now, this computational hardware, it, it needs to have a high pin count for interfacing with the outside world. It also needs to have low latency processing so that it can be used in real-time applications. And finally, you need something flexible to allow for upgrading the hardware uh, down the road or to make changes to your machine vision algorithm. What are some of the challenges you see, the high band of memory, the communication, all of that stuff coming together in a single vision system presenting to uh, you know, OEMs and system integrators who are trying to build one. Yeah, so the, the, the challenge with these design requirements is finding a platform that really supports them all. And so FPGAs are a great option and they give you the interfacing, the performance and the flexibility requirements that are needed here. And so our XEM8320 uh, development platform and the XEM8310 integration module both have Xilinx's latest cost-optimized FPGA, the Artix Ultra Scale Plus. Both have high bandwidth DDR4 memory, and we sell various camera peripherals that can be used during this uh, development. Most of the issues that come with FPGA development is, is how to communicate with that FPGA chip um, from an application like in, in the PC space. Mm -hmm. Um, you've got PCI Express, you've got USB, you've got some lower interface speeds uh, like UART, um, SPY, but you know those aren't too helpful. And so we actually have a solution to that communication from the PC to the FPGA, and we call it front panel. And all of our Opal Kelly boards are front panel enabled. And so that takes a huge burden off of any company uh, that wants to work with FPGAs. So what, can you tell me a little bit more about front panel? You know, what is it? Is it hardware? Is it software? How do you use it? You know, where do you get it? Yeah, so front panel essentially just provides an easy, high performance communication between FPGA and PC-based software. On the XEM8320 itself, that link is established um, over USB 3. And um, the front panel SDK, it includes firmware, it includes HDL modules, and um, we include multi-platform APIs in a number of different programming languages uh, to support various development approaches. Do you want to jump right into a demo that I know you have prepared for us and show us a little bit about how the front panel SDK works, especially in this particular application? I'll show a quick example of transferring data to and from the FPGA, and we'll take a look at the bandwidth speeds that we can expect from that USB 3 front panel link to the PC here on the XEM8320. And then finally, we'll explore a more advanced front panel enabled digital design in machine vision. Awesome, let's take a look. All right, so here we have a Vivado project configured with the XEM8320's Vivado board file. Now we provide Vivado board files for most of our Opal Kelly boards and those board files are available through Xilinx's board store. 
We also provide a front panel subsystem IP core that helps in the configuration of your front panel subsystem. And that'll be available in the IP catalog after you've acquired that IP core from our downloads page and you've imported it into your Vivado project. After opening up the Vivado IP core, you'll be presented with various configuration options, and you can learn more about using these configuration options at our documentation portal. And here you'll find documentation articles on getting started, how-to guides, technical reference, and discussion. Great. Now, endpoints are what tap into your HDL, and then you make calls to those endpoints from the software API. So we provide a wire in and wire out endpoint, and those allow you to bring in or read a 32-bit bus from your HDL. We provide a trigger in endpoint, and that allows you a one clock cycle pulse coming into your HDL, and that's good for starting state machines. And then we also provide a trigger out, which allows you to sense when one clock cycle pulses happen throughout your HDL. And that's great for monitoring the state of things. We also have the pipe in and pipe out endpoints, and those allow for bulk transfers into and out of the FPGA. Now, you can have multiple endpoints for any given endpoint type, and the endpoints are addressed, and then you call to that endpoint address within the software API. Now, the IP core also embeds example designs, which allow you to explore the various features of front panel and um, working with uh, the Vivado IP core in Vivado. So we're going to generate the example design for pipe tests. And this is going to allow us to pull some bandwidth metrics on that USB 3 link to the PC. Now, it takes a little bit of time to generate that example design. But after you've generated it, it'll open a new Vivado project for you. It'll import all the necessary files. It'll slap down the required blocks in this uh, IPI block designer, and it will make the interconnections uh, between those blocks. We've already generated the bit file for this, and so we're going to jump into uh, demonstrating that. So here I've pulled all of the files required for this example design, and you can get these files from our SDK download on our downloads page. And you can also learn more about what files are required here um, at our documentation portal. So here I have the generated bitstream, and we are going to open up our front panel application. And we're just going to show you how to configure your device and how to work with it, uh, the front panel application a bit. So you're able to just drag and drop your bit file right into the application here. And the configuration of the device actually happens through that USB 3 link. So it's hyper fast. We also provide something called XFP profiles which allow you to create a GUI to control the various endpoints that you've placed into your HDL. Here, um, it, it's just a very simple, you know, reading from the pipe in endpoint and writing to the, the pipe in endpoint. Here in the GUI, we, we don't get bandwidth metrics, but we do from the compiled C++ application. Okay. And here, I'm just gonna quickly show where that API call is to the, the pipe and endpoint. We see it here. We see it's to uh, a pipe and address at 80. We're not going to dive much deeper into that source code. And you can look at that source code more on your own time. But we're just going to run what that source code is. So here, We are pulling bandwidth metrics. Um, and what we can notice at large chunk sizes, we're getting around 360 megabytes per second. Now, we also post these bandwidth metrics in our documentation portal. And you can take a look at the performance on the various link types there. We have boards that have a USB 3 link, boards with a USB 2 link. And we also have some boards with a PCI Express link. So with the basics out of the way, now we're going to jump into the camera reference design. This example design includes a full image capture pipeline, transporting captured images to the host PC in real time. This example design, it does not perform any Im image processing, such as color correction or filtering or object detection. 
uh, but these functions can be added in using high level synthesis or using HDL flows. The, the C++ and the HDL source code are included as a free download on our downloads page. And this provides a great starting template for any machine vision application. The intent is for you to take this template and for you to add into it what you desire out of your machine vision application. So also included is a GUI application that's built on top of the front panel SDK to illustrate how a fully featured application can be built using the SDK. And this GUI is this GUI application that we're going to be building is separate from the GUI that we were talking about previously where you're it is separate from that GUI. The, the GUI is built upon uh, WX widgets. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just an example of uh, using some open source uh, GUI um, type library to, to make an application using front panel. Awesome. The XFP is more geared towards uh, internal development or, right. or, or things of that uh, nature. So here we have a top level architecture of what this templated machine vision example design is. And you can learn more about what these architectural sub blocks are at our documentation portal. And we describe them in more detail here. We're going to take a look at what hardware we're going to be demonstrating on today. That's going to be located in the hardware tab of our documentation portal. Here we can see we've got an XCM. 8320, and there's a Syzygy MIPI adapter card connected, which allows you to connect a MIPI camera. And today we're using a Digilent PCAM MIPI camera. So essentially the MIPI camera's feed is going to make its way through the adapter card, and it's going to end up on the FPGA. Now, once it makes its way onto the FPGA, it's going to end up in some high bandwidth DDR4 memory. And then we're going to pull the camera frames from that DDR4 memory, and we're going to pipe them out, and we're going to bring them into the PC space, and we're going to present them to that GUI. So let's go ahead and look at a demonstration of that now. And so the majority of this is happening using APIs, right? All APIs. I mean, so really what this, what we're talking about here is, you know, you did mention earlier that, you know, somebody on your team is probably going to need to understand how to program an FPGA. However, you know, at the application level, separate from this, you know, you can have, you know, the rest of your team really get started, you know, really get moving on the camera design itself, you know, while there's some co-design happening elsewhere. 100%. I mean, you can completely split that development up and you don't need to have somebody kind of working in the middle. Mm -hmm. on, on working on an API or figuring out how, how this communication is going to work. You can just have your HDL development guys placing those endpoints into their HDL. And then you can have a handoff to the software people on what endpoints there are and what where they're addressed at. And then they can get going on developing using our API. Yeah, why reinvent the wheel, you know, putting all the plumbing in place, right? Exactly. I mean, that's we saw that as an issue in the industry. And um, that's what Front Panel hopes to solve. This is great. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the XCM8320. The application has connected to it. We've already configured the bit file. And now we are going to uh, present the image frames. So again, just to reiterate what's happening here is the MIPI camera's feed is coming from the Digilent PCAM. It's getting run through the Syzygy MIPI adapter card which by the way is available for purchase on our product page. Those frames are then making their way to the FPGA, which is then bringing those frames into the DDR4 memory. And then the FPGA is pulling the frames from the DDR4 memory and piping them out um, using front panel and bringing them to the PC space where, where we're presenting them in this GUI. Now I can just kind of show you you know, a little bit of action because it kind of is uh, just a little bit boring bringing or just showing the board, uh, but but that's about nice it. Finger. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, to reiterate, it's it's very simple. The the template that we've put together, but the intent is that you as the customer takes this template and adds to it. You know, high, using high level synthesis, you can add video processing. 
uh, maybe you can create you know some cool object detection block in high level synthesis that you'll just stamp right into this template and you can get going uh, moving. You know, are you gonna have to go back after you're done, you know, with your development and prototyping and, you know, fine tune some of that communication, some of those interfaces, or is this like pretty optimized, pretty ready to go deployable into the field? Oh, this is a hundred percent optimized and ready to go. I mean, over the past 18 years, the front panel SDK, it's been deployed on USB 2.0, USB 3.0, and PCI Express platforms in thousands of projects around the world. Uh, it's great for prototype and proof of concept work in the lab, um, but it's also robust enough for production deployment as well. I mean, some customers have had front panel systems running continuously in production for several years. Obviously, this is just one camera reference design. You know, what are some of the other capabilities and other use cases, places that you're seeing your customers or maybe even internally at Opal Kelly? Because I imagine you, you all use this often too. You know, where are some of the other places you're seeing front panel being used? Oh, we're seeing it used in um, debug and test. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we use front panel for here a lot at Opal Kelly. You know, it's a great way just to, um, you know, hand off an asset to one of our PCB guys uh, to test uh, some work on the PCB, have, you know, one of those XFP profile GUIs mm -hmm. that they can just go ahead and uh, whirl up the application and they can, you know, kind of click around and uh, debug some of the board that we've put together. I went to the Opal Kelly website a lot when we were reviewing uh, one of the XEM development kits that you that you offer on DevKit Weekly. Um, so if you're interested in your viewing and you want to try to get your hands on that, I think that the raffle is going to be wrapping up here pretty soon, but it's worth a shot. Um, but the documentation there actually is fantastic. So anything that you need um you know any questions that you have are almost certainly answered there um, but in case there are questions michael that aren't answered in your really comprehensive documentation how can people reach out and get more information i mean you can just head right up right on in from this advertisement up top here you'll get navigated to the xcm 8320s product page and this is where you'll purchase also at the bottom of this page you'll find both a block diagram of what's on this board. And then you can head on into the documentation portal where you can learn more on the specifics of this device. You can click on our support tab and there you'll find our documentation portal. The documentation portal allows you to see getting started guides. You, can, you see various uh, user manuals and we also have that API reference. So to get started with the front panel API, just simply click on getting started and there you'll find all the information necessary for getting started with that uh, front panel API. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you coming on today, Michael, and hopefully in the future, we'll be able to see some more applications of front panel 